Cheers. I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing fantabulously well. Today I have a very, very special guest sitting right next to me. My fancy sister. <laughs> I have the one, the only, the Gabby Mac. She is back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Cheers you. once again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes. Well, Gabby, how does it feel to be back? It feels. I think I have a lot of feelings right now. Mm -hmm. Exciting, scary. <laughs> um, I think those are the top two. That's the only thing I can really think of right now. Exciting, it's scary. Nice um. Really motivated too, though. But then every now and then I'll be like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> it is well. It is well. Today, we are talking to you guys because of the things that are happening within Ghana. We just want to address it. As you guys know, our, both of our channels are about moving to Ghana, living in Ghana, being your best version of yourself in Ghana. But there are things happening. And it's like, we don't want to just brush over it and act like it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Because we are seeing it. Yeah. So we're like, let's just sit, sit down and talk about it, address it. And then we'll, we'll see where we move forward from this. Yes, but yes, yes. Definitely. First of all, if you didn't know, um, over the weekend or for the past three days, there have been protests going on in Ghana for a better Ghana. For even, what was the first hashtag? Fix the country, right? Yeah, that was uh, like, what, like two, two years, years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like this is a continuation of Fix the Country, to Definitely. Be honest, but Definitely. Yeah. So there have been protests happening, asking for a better Ghana, asking for change. You know, our economy is not economy. <laughs> and uh, so much is happening right now. And Nana is somewhere doing some tins. But, you know. So at the same time, while we're here on our channel, traveling around Ghana, you know, doing new adventures and things like that we're probably like ah, are we in the same Ghana that exactly. people are fighting for yeah. so we're like let's just have a quick conversation so the first thing is first uh we're both gonna just say what we're doing here in Ghana so I'll, I'll go to you like why did you decide to come here what are you doing here and um you know. okay so for this time around um this is not my first time so this will be I'll say my third but it's really like the second because the second time that <laughs> Sorry, when is it? <laughs> the second time that um I left, it wasn't like I was really leaving. It was mm -hmm. because of pandemic, and then I came back, so it wasn't really like another move. So if I'm talking about like I've done like two big moves. Mm -hmm. So the only difference is this time around, like I'm here to do business. Like I just dropped on my page that I'm starting a business. So I'm here this time to like really stay, and I realize if I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna need some type type of source of income, like some yeah. type of flow of income. So even I feel like even if you have money coming from outside, you should still have something here in Ghana. Yeah. Definitely. So ultimately, this time around is to like build that. So I'm working on building something that you know at least is like it's mine and like you know I have control over it and mm -hmm. things like that. And I mean at the end of the day, too, Ghana is my peaceful, you know yeah spot so place. my happy place so yeah i mean i'm back because um you know mainly because of that and just to like build a proper life here mm -hmm. very similar to gabby i'm here because ghana is my happy place like <laughs> every time someone asks me why did you move to ghana i just say i don't like london london is very miserable it's a rat race um i am very grateful for the i call it red passport privilege mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie very grateful um but at the same time, like, I'm very, I'm also very grateful that Ghana is also my home. Um, where I come from, not a lot of people at the age of 20 can say, oh, I'm going back to live in my African country yeah. by myself. Yeah. And, like, their parents be like, oh, yeah, that's fine. You're going to be safe. You know, you do you. Yeah. Like, you know, so that's a big deal to me as well. Ghana is a peaceful country. It's safe, you know. Yeah, my mom, I wanted to do it, like, back in college. Mm -hmm. And she was like okay and then just like when i was getting prepared she was like oh hell no <laughs> so <laughs> she, didn't believe you, right? she didn't believe me so right. i mean like after when like what fast forward like three four years later when i mm -hmm. did decide to do it she couldn't she realized she couldn't stop me at that point like you know, just leave me and let me this, just like this is our home you know and i'm very grateful that again i'm just proud to be a Ghanaian. honestly i am um so you know the things that are happening are heartbreaking but again they're happening so we have to address it exactly because we can't ignore it because it affects us it does affect us too. it does especially like being here trying to start business 
Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, it's the same economy that <laughs> mm-hmm. we're going to be in and things yep. are like, you know, are pricey. They're not cheap. Things are expensive. It's hard for everybody. So, like, I know you guys are wondering, like, so then why are you guys here, right? Exactly. <laughs> I know a lot of people ask me, how much money do I need to move to Ghana? Yeah. There is, for me, there's no right answer because one, the rates are always changing. Things are always changing. Things so, are definitely always changing. I say it all the time on my videos. Mm-hmm. like, I wouldn't be able to give you an exact figure because I don't know the type of lifestyle that you, you want to live. live when you're exactly. here. Like you have people that come and they live remote off the grid in a farmland and they're probably living off of peanuts like you know to survive but they're fine that's the lifestyle they want to live mm-hmm. um now what kind I'm of like lifestyle did you want city to babe like you know city yeah. babe like me <laughs> uh, I'm not saying that like Baby I'm girl. over the top I'm not at like I'm not eating at yeah, fancy restaurant every day. fancy restaurants every day but granted like i think once a week i would want to eat out mm-hmm. so you know eating out once a week um taking uber everywhere and all of that adds up right <laughs> and then okay i'm by myself too so like it won't be such a huge budget as opposed to if i was coming with my husband and my kids so it know. makes it harder to really put a number on it that's why mm-hmm. i always tell people i'm like think about however your lifestyle was wherever you're living now and then see if you could afford to live that here that would kind of give you some type of idea of where idea, your numbers yeah. would work Definitely. i mean it, it still is cheaper to live out here mm-hmm. regardless like rent is still cheaper um yeah. uh cost of living in general is still cheaper but it could add up very fast here yes. too because yeah. i would say what's deemed luxury here is something pretty simple and normal back in okay. uk or us you mm-hmm. know so like you you know going out to eat, going to the movies, going to go play, you know, bowling and arcade yeah. and stuff. That's on a regular basis for us. Like, where mm-hmm. every week you're trying to plan something to go with your friends or do with your family. But here is like, uh, no, that's like luxury. You you got to be on the... I feel like it's either, for for me, being here, like, as long as I have, I feel like you, you come to the point where it's either or. You're doing one or the other. Mm-hmm. So even though it's accessible, it's easy for you to reach, it's like you have to decide, are we going bowling and eating at home? Like, okay, okay, like I guess instead of doing one night of doing, doing all of it, all of it, but so it is, it is reachable. Mm-hmm. Why do you think people go back? I think they come with a lot of high expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of them don't know how to assimilate and conform to how living is here, mm-hmm. and like back to expectations, like they come with the idea that however way they were living, where they were living, they can bring that exact same thing here. Yeah. You can bring but so much here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you can physically, like, bring what's in your home to make you feel comfortable, like, you know, and accessible. But things are going to be different because, like, you come here, you're, you're, how we pay electric back there is different, like, how you pay electric here, right? Exactly. Um, Just, like, so many rules and so many things are different here so if you're not open-minded to learn and to assimilate to how things move here to adjust to adjust you're going to run very fast and if you live like how you live on the everyday basis over there like like i'm saying like if you're used to you know buying coffee every morning from Mm -hmm. starbucks or dunkin donuts Mm-hmm. Like, doing that here is crazy. You're going to spend, like, a lot of money. You better buy yourself a coffee maker and make it make in your it house. Because yeah. that's going to run you coins because that's not the typical lifestyle here. It, so yeah. something like that will be overpriced mm-hmm. as opposed you to... You know the funny thing you know, is? The funny thing is, I feel like that... I don't think that it's overpriced when you look at our coffee shops. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's... It, sometimes it's decent. Okay. It's the fact that coffee shops are not popular here. So they're not around every corner, every corner for you to just get up and say, I'm going to Starbucks. That's around the corner. Yeah. Like you have to literally physically go to the mall. Mm-hmm. And which sometimes is not in, you know, in your area. In so your imagine area. spending the money just, just to go to, to the go mall. There just to go there. To get that. As opposed to like in our place every morning, you yes. see the Dunkin' Donuts and the Starbucks line so long because exactly. they're all over the place. But yeah. that's the normal living, living there. there. But, like, in Ghana, you see a cuckoo seller every corner. Yes, even because though, that's normal here. Yeah. That's why it's on the cheaper it's, side. But even that's why we're talking about having this video, because even now people are complaining that cuckoo is now seven cities. So, you know, things are happening hey, in seven Ghana. seven cities? Yeah. I didn't even know. I didn't even bust up. <laughs> I saw a video on Pulse. It was, like, seven cities. But, yeah, this leads me to my next question. Like, is there ever a right time to make the move? 
I don't think there's ever a right time. Like, mm-hmm. you just got to pick your time and just come. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I was telling you the other day, I'm like, I mean, I could I have waited a little bit longer bef- before coming. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I'm like, if I did, when would I actually really come? Because I'm like, mm, I'll keep saying and prolong it. Oh, let me just work a little bit and make some more money. Oh, let me just work yeah, a little bit, little bit and make some more money. And you end up finding yourself being there. And then by the time you realize the year is over and it's like, you're still not here yet. Mm-hmm. So I think it's one of those things like once you, you have certain things in place, you better get that fire up your butt and be moving. Mm-hmm. Because if not, you're going to stay. So for me, that certain thing in place is literally... More having multiple streams of income. If you can have a stream of income coming from the abroad, I find that. I feel like you're good to go. If you know you can work remotely, you're literally good to go. Just know that every month, you know you're going to have between $100 to maybe $1,000 or £100 to £1,000 coming in that you can manage that will maintain you. And I'm saying that from a single person's point of view. Mm-hmm. If you're a couple, you know, there's definitely... I mean, there's two two heads are better than one. Sure. So there's something you can do, you know. Um, when you first came, mm-hmm. did you, like, have a... Well, yeah, I mean, you had, you had your studio at home. Like the YouTube studio? N- the other studio. Oh, the hair studio. Yes. No, no, no. I, I mean, that was after, like, the second time around. Oh, okay. That wasn't, like right off the bat like right off the bat when i came it was like i was literally just running away like i was so over <laughs> america and i just ran so like i didn't really have a concrete concrete plan the plan was to come and work in entertainment mm-hmm. because the prior year i had made a lot of connections with people in the movie industry so i wanted to either be working behind scene or in front of the camera that, that was ultimately the plan was to come and get into movies and of course mm-hmm. i got here and that failed miserably um, because where I wanted to work at actually had some issue. I don't want to mention the name, but it had some mm-hmm. issues and kind of collapsed. So <laughs> that didn't work out. And then the people that I, the connections that I made are still trying to keep in touch with them. Because at first they kept saying, you need to be here to do this. You need to be here to do this. So they were the one really pushing me like, mm-hmm. oh, you need to come to come. So I'm like, okay. Then you came. I came for me to get here and none of them like came through. English. It was definitely not as tough as the economy is now mm-hmm. is i mean it had its ups and downs then but would i take then to now hell yeah oh, yes. i'll take it that, yes 2018 2019 oh, even 20, 2017 to 2019 ghana was nice it was decent it oh, was yeah. nice people weren't even complaining that much i mean we had, like, we had yeah. issues yeah that I mean that's doomsaw era and those stuff like yeah. that but even it was like that, was now slowly like getting out of the way but even that i still felt like people are a little bit more comfortable where they didn't really complain as to like oh mm-hmm. i'm going to the to the simple street food vendor to buy food and now it's like overpriced yeah. almost getting as high as me going cities, to sit at a restaurant 10 cities could last you a whole day back then i'm talking yeah. for me going to school eating fruit eating beans yeah. eating rice and going back home like yeah. 10 because those times you can buy stuff and say give me one city this give me one, one city, city that. that yeah now what can one city really get you it can't even get you a bottle of kinky it can't get mm-hmm. you cocoa can't get you granuts nothing right now with that being said gabby so a lot of a lot of people have asked us are we protesting so unfortunately we both didn't protest because we we're sitting here talking to you guys but uh, I'll ask you first, why didn't you protest? And please, we are going to be very candid with you. There's no judgment here. We're just being honest so you understand why. Um, so. I have my personal reasons as to why I never really go out to protest. Mm-hmm. I've shared this story with Precious that um, back when I was in high school was when I got the thrill to want to go and protest. And went one time and saw that it was a failure and I think that moment that like my wings were broken when it comes down to that and I felt like do these things actually make a difference right Mm -hmm. so back in college when the police brutality started you know really getting out of hand Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of protesters just get really crazy they always say it's peaceful but it turns crazy to something else and seeing people hurt people getting arrested and I just ultimately could not see myself I couldn't bring myself to do it and I was just like I don't see me calling my mom and telling her, Ma, I went to protest. I'm in jail now. Like, come get me. Mm-hmm. And she'll be like, I didn't send you for that. I sent you to go to school to study. Not for you. I mean, granted, it's like we needed to stand up and stuff. But I've thought that I can use 
Okay, I found other ways by talking about it through my profiles, mm -hmm. by using the platforms that I've, you know, put myself out there and, I, and I decided to use that instead of um, physically going out there. I mean, some of them say, why are you chicken out? Or like, why are you like, you don't want to be part of... Some people too might also be thinking like, it might not be affecting us. That's probably why Yeah, we don't care enough to be out there, right? Because at the end of the day, if something drastic happened to Ghana, we could pick up our bags and, and ultimately leave. leave. But that's never, <laughs> that's never been, you know, in my mind that, that I, I would do that. Because mm -hmm. like I said, I mean, I was here during the times where there was some, you know, some mm -hmm. tough times too. And it's not, my idea is not to just get up and run. It's to, you know. Stick it out. Stick it out. Go through it and figure out how everyone can manage and just see. Because there's different ways that we can all help everybody physically being outside in the street protesting is not the only thing you can yeah. possibly do because even something simple as I put it on my story, I was like, oh, Ghana. And I had a bunch of people messaging me like, what's the going problem? On. What's going and on? They because they didn't even know about the Because protest. it's not everybody that's seeing the same mm -hmm. content that I'm seeing. So exactly. for me, because I follow certain bloggers and stuff, I see these things. I'm following it. Mm -hmm. But for some of my people back in the States, they don't know exactly everything that's going on, mm -hmm. especially if they're not super involved with whatever's happening here. Exactly. So I was able to share some information for them to also go and look up for themselves. So there's different ways I think we can all, you know, talk about it, make a difference, make people aware about it. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, like, I I feel the pain and I, I understand why everybody's out there Things definitely need to change. like And be addressed. It does. Because I think Ghanaians are at the point where they're tired of governments coming in and never being held accountable or never actually saying what they have come to do. Like, exactly. you've taken money. What did you use the money for? And then now we are asking what you use the money for. As Us as a youth, we're being called disrespectful. Yeah. Like, it doesn't even make sense. So, But, but that goes back to how I feel like a lot of people was raised here. To that the young to be timid, quiet, quiet don't say anything, don't right. ask questions. So the adult is always critical thinking. I would say like lack of critical yeah, thinking. Yeah, the adult is thinking. always right. You can't question them. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you clearly see the adult take holding your hand. You're not even blind, though. You the person is holding your hand, taking you, you into the, the river. Little <laughs> into the river, the fire, everything. And you are not to say anything. And you're not supposed to say anything. Come on. That don't make no sense. I'm not even blind holding your hands. I can clearly see, see 2020 vision. And I'm walking with you. It doesn't make sense. And I think they are about that to like you that here saying like, look, we see now and we're going to talk about it. We want to hold you accountable. You got to tell us something. What hurts is the fact that at the end of the day, our leader, let's be honest, majority of our leaders are over 60. Some of them are over 70. No offense, but very soon they will leave us and leave the country here for us. And it's gonna in the state that they in, left it in. in the state that they left it in, and it's gonna be up to us to fix it for the future generation. And it just feels like the past couple of governments haven't really considered the future generation. It's all about they themselves and no, their family in that moment. There's hierarchy in these situations. Mm -hmm. Families have been promised these positions, so I don't care how much we go out there to vote and try to change the votes. People. I've been told that you are up next. <laughs> it's yeah. as simple as that. Like, mm -hmm. let's be real. Let's be honest, guys. Mm -hmm. This is how it works here. Mm -hmm. Not just here. No, the other places too. But yeah. this is how it and works here. Africa, yeah. Families have been told you are next. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to sit there and allow you, you as a young person, to come in and say that it's my turn. I mean, like, I want to come in because the old man that's coming up <laughs> next... He was. He's been waiting, he's for, been like waiting years. for his turn. You get what I'm saying? For let's so, say 30, 20 years, yeah. It has to be something like somebody needs to come that can make some drastic change that can put all these people on blast that have solid proof that I think to the point where the elders too can say like, okay, we too we, we are fed you. up. Let's get this new person but even, in. But even this is this is how we this is how we found ourselves here. Because in 2016, Nana came and said he's going to end corruption. Uh huh. Like that was his And he thing. was well on his way doing that too. But then, you know, the funny thing is, as I was hearing this, I had people telling me that those that say they're going to end corruption end up being the ones the worst. that are most corrupt. Because the but, funny part about it, when you say you're ending corruption, you have to end it on both sides of the party. 
-hmm. You cannot be only investigating the One previous side. side that was before you. Well, you have to also and put all their dirty laundry out, but you don't want to go into your side and put <laughs> out the laundry out. You know. So you didn't really end anything. No. You were just trying to attack one party. One side. And one that's, side. What, that's what happens. Because even we were talking about the fact that it seems like at the end of every term, when they know they're not going to win, what they do is they mess everything up so that the next party have to come have in. Have to come deal with it. it. It's either that or they're going to fix a few things so they can be, be praised that, that oh, they this is did what they this did during, during their, time. their time. But you guys, I'm sure you guys are used to it. So I will also answer the question of why I didn't protest. I don't have any, like... um deep issue like Gabby addressed for me I just have to be honest with you protesting is not something that I'm comfortable with it's not something that I have never done it before I understand why it's done mm -hmm. and the funny thing is this time this particular time it's very strange to me and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video is because there feels like we are a there's segregation within us young people that are striving for a better Ghana because it feels like if you don't go and protest, they're also looking at you like, Why are you not here? You don't care, yeah, because people and are being called out, people are being called out, and it's like we have to understand that not everybody wants to protest and be and be there. Um, but at the same time, we have the same thoughts and feelings as you do, and we want we do want a better Ghana, of course, we want a better Ghana, but I felt just like you mentioned before we have a different means we have a platform that we can use to talk about these mm -hmm. issues in terms of protesting guys in the comments down below let us know what you think if you were in ghana or if you are in ghana did you go to the protest would you have protested do you think there's other ways for us as young people to get our voices heard um to uh, to be seen uh, to strive for a better mm -hmm. ghana at the end of the day we are here we both have our businesses we're both proud ghanians we're both going to keep striving for the best and um do our part and contribute to the economy yeah, as well I mean, as you still, as have, we to keep we still going have to keep going i mean i always say there's there's things happening in the abroad it's just i always say it's just different color and different faces <laughs> it's just there's there's similar things happening they like even in the uk they know how to uh, add glitter and gold to make it shine shine yeah. but and we are here their issues too, but... they have their issues too but people still there hustling, doing their businesses, working things. I mean, that's why I do jobs. understand, like you're saying, like the market women are just still going about mm -hmm. selling their products and stuff because they still need to put food on, on the, the table. table. So they stuff. can't stop to say all in the name of protest. So you're not going to get everyone that's going to come out there. But that's why we have leaders for it. That's why we have activists for it. Mm -hmm. Those people are supposed to stand, you know, for the for people... Us. Who can't who don't have a voice mm -hmm. so you can't expect everyone there um so people are just gonna try and then some people are just i'm sorry some people are just not built for for that mm -hmm. you know um, I, i'm granted they feel affected and they would like to do something maybe they'll find other ways to um you know to contribute us, but find other yeah ways. but but last thing don't mm -hmm. let that discourage you if you're still interested in here because mm -hmm. I mean, Ghana is still a developing country. It's yes. still growing, and like you know, I read place. I read somewhere where it's like, if 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 we had like ten things needed to make a country run, some countries are only on one, but they're still making it work. Mm -hmm. And Ghana is a place where we are so resourceful. There's so much so that can be things. done. Here. Agriculture, tourism, so everything. We just need the right people leading. Mm -hmm. The mindset needs to change, mm -hmm. and everyone needs to see how they can. Be of help. Yeah, it shouldn't be a selfish move. You know, it shouldn't. It, sh it shouldn't be because ultimately, for me, even though starting a business and I'm like, it's putting money in my pocket. I've always dreamt of opening something to give someone work, even if it's one person or it's two people that I'm helping, helping. to put food on their table, table. for them yeah. to work, for them to get experience. I think that that is a way of contributing. So if you if you're not doing it for a selfish reason. You can still come. You can still make it work. You just ultimately have to plan. And now it probably just involves a little bit more money. So Thank you so much for watching. If you have watched this far, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Head over to Gabby's channel. She has a lot happening there. Like, big things are happening. So, yes. Um, I do want to hear your thoughts. So, please, let me know. If you were in Ghana, would you protest? If you weren't, what do you think about what's happening? And what do you see happening in the future? Let me know everything give us all the gist all the details and yeah thank you to my my wonderful fancy sister welcome here once again thank you. and yes we'll see you very soon guys
Bye. <laughs>